You're watching Keystone Science. And in today's episode, we're going to show you how to make your very own Jacob's Ladder. In a previous episode, I showed how to build a small Jacob's Ladder that's portable. And you can see that right here, and also a link will be in the description below if you want to go view that. However, in this video, I failed to mention why a Jacob's Ladder performs the way it does. At the bottom here, since that's the easiest for the electricity to jump across, it'll jump across this. But as it does, the air around it's going to heat up. As the air heats up, it becomes more conductive. Since heat rises, the electricity is going to follow the easiest path, which is following that warm air all the way up to the top. Eventually, near the top here, it's going to get to a point where it will be easier for it to jump across the bottom here again than to stretch that distance. So the arc will break and it will restart at the bottom, climbing back up the ladder over and over. If you have not done anything with electricity, then please do not start with this project. The project is high voltage, meaning it can jump at you. But not only that, it also has a high current. Some of the methods I'm going to show you today for creating a Jacob's Ladder can kill you if it touches you. And if you do have experience with electricity, still be very careful. With Halloween coming up, I'm personally building this as a Halloween decoration that's going to be in my yard, but I'm going to have it definitely put off to the side where no one can touch it and have a danger high voltage sign next to it because it's pretty dangerous. For the arcing part of the Jacob's Ladder, I took a piece of wood and nailed these wires onto it. These wires are pretty sturdy so I can bend them into position. The first method is going to be using one of these microwave oven transformers. In fact, I've already made a video uploaded that shows you how to safely get these out of microwaves, so I'll have that linked below. As a quick refresher, these two tabs down here are going to be where AC mains goes into, and the high voltage is going to be in two parts. This tab connected to this thin wire over here, and the other side of the high voltage coil is going to be connected to the body of the transformer over here. Make sure your plug is disconnected and then connect up your transformer to mains. All right, now I'm going to take the end of one of the high voltage coils and connect it up to one side of the Jacob's Ladder. Now I'm going to make sure one wire has contact with the body of the transformer. A lot of times, these transformer's bodies will be coated in enamel, so you're going to want to take some sandpaper and sand it off to make sure that it's a metal to metal connection. Now I'm going to take that wire we just connected to the body of the transformer and I'm going to connect it to this end of the Jacob's Ladder. Now go ahead and plug it in and flip on the power. As you can hear, it's on, but nothing's happening. This is because microwave oven transformers only output around 2,200 volts. And through air in most conditions, electricity requires 10,000 volts per centimeter to jump across. However, by taking an insulated stick with a piece of metal on top, we can see that we can still stretch arcs across this. Right when I would start the spark, it would start that process of making that plasma, and since the plasma is more conductive, it was able to jump across it. Now this microwave oven transformer, more than anything else I show you today, is going to be the most dangerous, because at 2000 volts, it's also an extremely high current. And so a touch to this one will probably be fatal. Since it's only 2000 volts, there's no real way to get it to self-continually climb the ladder. But since it's such high power, you could make a really tall Jacob's ladder with this. Now the next and one of my favorites of the options to make a Jacob's Ladder is going to be a neon sign transformer like this one. This one right here outputs 15,000 volts at 30 milliamps from the high voltage ends here. However, these can be around $150 if you buy them new. But oftentimes, if you look long and hard enough, you can find them for pretty cheap. For instance, I bought this one for $20 off of some guy on the internet. Okay, so now we can attach one end of the high voltage output to here, and the other high voltage output to the other side. Now when we flip on the transformer, watch what happens. As you can see, it continuously climbs up the ladder. Now, as you can see along here, it's not going up all the way. So what you'd want to do is have straighter wires going up it so it would climb the ladder better. That initial wire placement is going to make a big difference in what it does. Although this one probably won't kill you, it will still hurt very, very bad, and it may kill you, so don't touch it and don't let anyone else touch it. As you can see, the arc is easily hot enough to burn paper. Now, with the microwave oven transformer I showed a second ago, after leaving it running for just a little bit, it would get pretty warm and might overheat. However, I've left this Jacob's Ladder running before for about 40 minutes, and it was barely warm. So this is definitely a good option if you're planning on making a Halloween decoration like I am. As you can see, after I straighten the wires a little bit, the arc is running a lot higher up the ladder. And the third power source I have lying around that I could use to make a Jacob's Ladder is going to be this guy. Now, we made this high voltage power supply in a previous video, the link will be in the description below, but basically you can make it out of a fluorescent light ballast and a flyback transformer which can be found inside of a CRT TV. Although I rate this at around 25,000 volts, the current is pretty low. As you can see when I flip on the switch, it's not going to make it that high up the ladder because the air isn't heating up enough to be that nice plasma. So the disadvantage of this third option is definitely that it doesn't have enough current to really stretch its way up the ladder. However, if you think there's a chance of someone shocking themselves, this is probably going to be the safest of the three options. So now you know how to make a Jacob's Ladder. Thank you all so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate it if you'd share it with your friends as it really helps the channel out a ton. And if you'd like to see my weekly videos show up in your subscription news feed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below. In this video, I was using my bare hands around it. However, please don't do that. That's really unsafe and I'm just really dumb. So with that all said, be safe and have a wonderful day.
You're watching Keystone Science, and in today's episode, we're going to show you how to use electromagnetism to make your very own speaker. 